Okay, lesson number one. While you might be an excellent pilot, that's not enough to be able to be a proficient flight instructor. This lesson covers what you need to know to be able to be an effective teacher. As a flight instructor, you need to be able to size up your student and provide the most optimum flight instruction program. This requires a thorough understanding of human nature and the learning process. Okay, let's begin. This is lesson number one, Fundamentals of Instruction. Now, as a flight instructor, you not only need to be a proficient pilot, but you also need to be able to teach your student all the material required to become a safe and proficient pilot. To this end, you need to understand the basics of education or the fundamentals of instruction. If you have a teaching background, it will come in handy. Basic psychological principles are applied to these fundamentals as well. This lesson covers the following topics. The learning process, human behavior, effective communications, the teaching process, the instructor as critic, evaluation, instructional aids, flight instructor characteristics and responsibilities, flight instruction techniques, and instructional activity planning. So let's start with the learning process. What is learning? One good definition is that learning is a change in your student's behavior resulting from experience. Now, that works for me and the FAA. Learning has to be a goal. Almost everyone has set a goal in his or her life and your actions are best directed to the activities which directly apply to reaching these goals. So the degree of learning is controlled by your student's desire. The behavior change can be physical and overt, or it can be intellectual or attitudinal and not easily detected. You know the saying that there's no substitute for experience. Well, that's really quite true. It is a fact that all learning involves experience. To be effective, you as the instructor must provide experiences which your students can identify as steps toward attaining his or her personal goals. Your student must involve his or her verbal, perceptual, conceptual, motor, problem solving, and emotional resources. Learning is complex. For example, while studying to learn one element, something else may be learned. This additional learning is called incidental learning. This is the landing gear right here. All learning occurs through the student's perception, which is directed to the brain from one or more of the five senses, sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. Thus, perception results when your student gives meaning to the sensation experienced. However, the ability to perceive is affected by all physical objects, which are the means by which we become aware and the world of which we are a part. These objects include our essential need. This need is basic and drives to enhance our organized self. Our goals and values. Our values cover every experience that we have. Our self-concept. Now, our self-concept is the way we picture ourselves. It's a powerful determinant in learning. A positive self-concept enhances our perception. But a negative self-concept inhibits the perceptual process. It introduces psychological barriers which prevent our perceiving. Time and opportunity. We need these in order to provide the experiences necessary to perceive instruction. By using a properly planned training syllabus, learning is far superior to learning by trial and error because it allows the instructor to teach the relationship of perceptions as they occur. Recognition of the element of threat. Fear adversely affects our perception by narrowing our perceptual field. 